From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Welcome to this Cube Conversation. I'm Lisa Martin, and today I'm talking with Vanti again. Nayaki Nayar, their Chief Product Officer and EVP, is back with us, as is another Cube alumni, Sumid Takar, the President and Chief Product Officer of Fallis. Nayaki, Sumid, great to have you guys both back on the program. Great to be back here, uh, Lisa. I think it's becoming a habit for me to be uh, <laughs> talking to you almost I like it. Uh, every week, yes. And yeah, so great to be here. To Thank you for inviting you. me. So let's go right into some exciting news here. So Avanti has had a lot of momentum in the last week or so, Nayaki, with launch announcements. Talk to us about what you're announcing today in terms of an expansion with the Avanti Qualis partnership. So Lisa, uh, as you remember this week, uh, we had a great week this week with the launch of uh, our Ivanti Neurons platform uh, that really helps our customers address end-to-end -end management of their endpoints and security of those endpoints, how we can help them, uh, what we call self-fuel, self-secure, and self-service the endpoints. And, and one of the key strengths Ivanti has uh, in our portfolio is uh, our ability to manage all the patches. Today, with our uh, Ivanti patch management solution, we patch approximately 1.2 billion patches uh, on, a, on an annual basis. So that's a pretty big volume. And uh, we are extremely excited as a part of this launch and announcement uh, to also share uh, the partnership we have with Paulus and how we are extending and uh, helping Qualys with their overall vision for VMDR. So Simi, let's go right into that. Talk to us about VMDR. Vulnerability management has been around for a while. What is VMDR and Qualys' perspective and what are you looking to do with your partnership with Avanti? Yeah, I mean, I, I should know about vulnerability management being around for a while. I've been 18 years at Qualys, so, so we've been <laughs> doing this for a long time. and. Uh, you know what's happened is with the hybrid infrastructure exploding and a lot more devices being uh, added and focus shifting from just servers to endpoint i think there is just a need to be able to do vulnerability management uh, in addition uh, also have the ability to do uh, assessment of your devices in terms of inventory etc so discovering your devices um, being able to do vulnerability assessment uh, configuration uh, assessment, but also be able to prioritize those vulnerabilities on which ones do you really need to patch because you just have way too many vulnerabilities. And then at the end, all of this vulnerability management is not useful if you can't do something about it, right? And that's where you need the ability to patch and fix those issues. And this is where uh, VMDR really brings that workflow in a single platform end to end. So instead of just throwing a big report of CVEs, we provide the ability to go from detection of the device to the patching. And this is where Ivanti partnership has been something that has really helped our customers because they bring in that patching piece. And this is one of the most complicated things you do. Uh, and and uh, because taking a vulnerability and, and mapping it to a particular patch is very complex to do. And that's where the Ivanti partnership is helping us. And so this is an expansion to me. You guys have been doing this for Windows and Linux and now this is adding Mac support and others. Tell me a little bit more about the additional capabilities that you're enabling. Yeah, so uh, what, what's interesting is that uh, when we started working on this, this was uh, before the pandemic hit and uh, COVID has certainly added a, a very uh, interesting twist to the patching challenge, right? And, and the ability for uh, the system admins to suddenly patch uh, 100,000, 200,000 devices, which are, not in your office with a high-speed internet anymore. They are sitting in a little apartments all over the world with the low uh, bandwidth Wi-Fi connections, et cetera. How do you patch those endpoints? And so when, while the focus at the beginning was a lot more on, uh, on Windows and uh, Linux, um, which are more on the server side, uh, with the pandemic hitting, there is a big need now for people also to be able to do their Macs and other uh, endpoints that are now remote and at people's homes. And so, uh, obviously, with the uh, success of the patch management capabilities on Windows that uh, we, we got with Ivanti, they are a natural partner for us to also expand that into being able to do it for the Macs as well. And so now we're working together to get this done for the Macs. So Nayaki, 
In terms of the announcements from Ivanka that have been coming out the last week or so, we talked with Jeff Abbott last week about the partnerships in the GTM. Talk to me about from a strategic perspective, how does the expansion of the Qualys partnership dial up Ivanti's vision? Yeah, so um, Lisa, you know, when you take a look at what's really happening across every enterprise, uh, every large company, especially during COVID and post COVID, is what we call this explosive growth of remote workers, right? As everyone is trying to manage what the transformation to remote working means, uh, the explosive growth of devices uh, that now have to be managed by every IT organization, not to mention how to secure those devices, which is where uh, this partnership with Polis becomes extremely strategic for us. Now we can extend that overall vision that we have with our Ivanti neurons to uh, discover every device we have, uh, the customers have, sense any security vulnerabilities, uh, anomalies that are on those devices, prioritize those based on risk-based priority uh, with algorithmic priority as we embed more and more AI ML into it and get into what we call this auto remediation, right? Remediating all those vulnerabilities, which nicely fits into policies, overall VMDR vision and strategy, right? So this truly helps our customers go beyond just managing the endpoints to now what we call self-securing those endpoints, being able to automatically detect all security vulnerabilities and issues and get closer and closer to the self-remediation of those vulnerabilities. And that's why this partnership makes, I would say, a great uh, strategic um, benefit for all of our customers and large enterprises. So Sumi, talk to us about the VMDR life cycle. Give us a picture of, when, of where your customers are and that, how this is really going to help them deal with the new normal of even more devices going to be remote for a long TBD period of time. Yeah, what's what's happening now is that uh, that this is being extended to home devices, right? Customers in the past were only looking at enterprise devices that were owned by the organization. And we continuously now see we can't get a new laptop to the user or they're using their home device, uh, home desktop, because it, it's bigger screen, more powerful, whatever it is. So people are starting to do that and you can't really stop them from doing that if you want to get work done. And so the, the, the need to basically, essentially VMDR is four things, right? Which is continuous asset inventory discovery. Second is detection of all security issues, uh, including uh, vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. Uh, third is the prioritization based on the knowledge of the device and what's running on the device. Just because you have a severity five vulnerability or a highly exploitable vulnerability does not mean that you need to uh, prioritize that as the first one to patch, and then you need to be able to patch it. And so that's the four elements that make up the VMDR lifecycle. And uh, as customers have no good way to detect what devices are there, what is connecting to their VPN, because now they don't actually physically see the devices, you know, their, their traditional network devices that were, fi or, or, you know, home uh, office firewalls that were sitting in the office that were detecting devices are, are now not useful because everybody's outside the firewall. And so that, that entire life cycle uh, is something that customers want to do because at the end you, you want to reduce your risk quickly and having a single platform that does all of that is, is the key benefit that we get from there. Talk to me a little bit about the go-to-market in terms of how are your customers, joint customers, buying this solution? Yeah, I, I think the what we've really worked on is typically what happens today is the customers, different vendors are providing individual pieces, right? You have to go buy a different inventory solution, a different vulnerability solution, a different prioritization, a different patch solution. So working with Avanti, we really worked on creating a single platform. And you know this took us a, a, a quite a bit of time to really make that engineering integration work to be able to have Ivanti uh, patch management directly embedded into the Polis agent. So that way uh, customers don't have to deploy another agent and they don't have to buy different solutions with different consoles. So from a go-to-market perspective, we keep it very simple for our customers. They, they essentially have a one uh, price for their entire asset. And then if they choose to do the patch management, this is something that we sell as a capability that is directly available through Qualys. And Ivanti has done a huge amount of work to integrate seamlessly in the back end to help the customers so that they don't have to you know, buy from one, buy from another and try to integrate it themselves. 
And Lisa, if you look at it, it's really a, a way for customers to handle heterogeneous landscape, patching of heterogeneous landscape that they have in their environment, all the way from the data centers to, to those endpoints. They had Windows devices, Mac devices, uh, Linux devices, and in future, we'll also be supporting multiple other devices uh, and platforms through uh, Policy's VMDR platform. Absolutely. Let's talk about the target audience and really understanding, you know, from a security perspective, it's top of mind for the C-suite all the way up to the board. Now with COVID and the increase in ransomware and some of the things, the device spread, that's probably only going to spread even more. Nayaki, starting with you, what, how are you seeing the customer conversations change? Are you now not just talking to IT? Is this elevated up the stack? Is this a CEO board level concern that you're helping them to remediate? Oh, absolutely, Lisa. I mean, this conversation about uh, cybersecurity challenges, especially as organizations are trying to figure out what this transformation to remote working means, this is really not just limited to an IT organization or a CIO level conversation. This is a, a C-suite conversation at the CEO level. And in most cases, I'm also saying this becoming a board conversation and I'm a couple of uh, boards myself. And this is truly a board conversation where discussing how we help enterprises transform to, to remote working and cybersecurity challenges as uh, more and more workers are working from home, right? Securing those devices is top of mind for um, pretty much CEOs and the boards and helping them through the transition is, is a number one priority. Between the partnership uh, with Polis and Ivanti, for us to offer this uh, joint solution and really make it available where they can address uh, the security concerns that they have in their environment. And to me, yeah. in terms of target market, our, uh, we talked with uh, Nayaki and Jeff last week about um, from a vertical perspective, they've got a lot of strengths in healthcare and retail, for example. Are you looking at any leading edge markets right now, verticals that really are at most risk, or are you attacking this from a GTM perspective in a horizontal way? I mean, it's not even our choice anymore because what's happened with remote working, no matter what industry you are in, everybody's workers are working from home essentially, right? And using laptops and the number of attacks have uh, significantly multiplied because now that this endpoint is outside of your traditional uh, defenses that you have in an office environment, uh, these endpoints are a lot more vulnerable and, and you know, they're in a home network and, you know, I have devices in my home network from my kids that are running all kinds of Fortnite and things like that, that, that now actually could have access to my work laptop, right? So, so that is becoming a big concern. And uh, the other realization that you cannot really use enterprise solutions as you have in the past for uh, patching and securing your endpoint that's not inside the enterprise, because you know, a single SMB ghost vulnerability patch is 350 megs for one device. If you have that patch, a thousand devices trying to download that over VPN, uh, it's just not going to work and it kills the VPN. So there is this big push towards uh, moving into a cloud-based um, method of deploying these patches so you can actually get these patches deployed without hitting your VPN environments. And, and this is really the, the big thing. And I, I know the other day I read uh, something that, that asked like what's, what uh, is accelerating the digital transformation to the cloud for your enterprise and you know, there was a CEO and, and uh, the CISO and then COVID, right? So unfortunately, the pandemic has been bad in many ways, but in other ways, it has really helped organizations uh, move more quickly to get approvals from the board and the management because the other option is just not a choice anymore, which is trying to use on-prem solutions. So that resistance to cloud-based solutions is significantly decreasing because, you know, today we're all sitting in different locations and, and meeting every day on video, et cetera, and that's really powered by the cloud-based platforms that we have today. Yeah, I call it the COVID catalyst. There are a lot of interesting things that are positive that are being catalyzed as a result of yeah. this massive change. I would like to, one more question, Sumin, for you. In terms of, of this enabling VMDR to become a category, a target market for endpoint security, how does this help? 
Well, I mean, I think uh, the more we can provide the customer ability to reduce the number of different steps that they have to go through and the different tools that they have to purchase and multiple agents and multiple consoles that they have to put together, you know, that that it, then it just becomes a category in itself because you kind of have that ability to do detection, prioritization and response in a single solution which is something that nobody else offers today because everybody's focused on just one aspect of it and so today the response from our customers has been absolutely tremendous they are extremely happy to have this ability to very quickly figure out what's wrong you know one of the things we didn't talk a lot about but i would say in patch management uh, process the biggest uh, challenge and where most time is spent is is mapping a cve to a specific patch that needs to be deployed on a specific machine because of 64-bit architecture, 32-bit architecture. So the Ivanti catalog helps us tremendously to help uh, bring the knowledge that we have on the CVEs to that catalog and then give our customers a way to, um, to be able to get those patches deployed in a very, very quick way. And so, so that essentially has just created this new category when you have this end-to-end -end ability on a single platform, right? So whether it comes from Qualys or somebody else, I think the need is there to say, when I'm looking at patch management, I want the discovery of vulnerability and patching all of that to be done together. And that speed is absolutely critical. So in terms of general availability, I mean, is this available now? When do customers get access? So the with the partnership with Avanti, so we have, VMDR in general has been available now for customers for a couple of months, but now with the enhanced partnership, uh, it, it was available for Windows or is currently available for Windows and now uh, we are working with Ivanti for the next uh, few months to get the Mac uh, version out. So we would think about in the next uh, couple of quarters, we will have that available through Qualys VMDR, the ability to patch the Macs as well. Excellent. Nayaki, let's go ahead and, and take this home with you. In terms of, give me kind of an overall, round this out, the expansion of the partnership, the importance of helping customers in these disparate environments, and the momentum that this gives Avanti for the, the rest of the year and going into 2021? Yeah, so, I mean, this really rounds our entire uh, Ivanti's vision and strategy, uh, Lisa, where, I mean, our ability to discover every uh, asset customers have uh, on their endpoints, endpoint assets, edge devices, uh, being able to uh, manage those devices holistically end-to-end, -end, secure those devices, and also do service management of those devices. And I mentioned this, we are the only vendor in the market that can do all of this end to end all the way from discovery to security to service managing uh, the devices, which uh, uh, and the partnership with Qualys really helps us round it off across uh, the board, this full life cycle of endpoint management, device management, and also enables us to extend to the natural adjacencies of IoT with our Ivanti Neuron's uh, vision and strategy, and truly get into a world of what we call self-healing and self-securing, the autonomous edge that uh, we really strive to in the longer term. Well, congratulations, both of you, on this expansion of the partnership. We thank you for taking the time to explain to us the value in it, the challenges that it's gonna solve for your customers. Nayak, it's always great to have you on the program. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa and Sumit. Uh, absolutely a great pleasure talking to you all the time. Thank you for inviting me and uh, good seeing both of you. And I look forward to uh, seeing you guys again. Have a good yes, day. Yes, it'd be great to meet you as well. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this Cube Conversation.